الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كلام المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل اذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وقال تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه والصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله from the first of ربيع الاول we took upon this initiative where we spend 15 minutes after Salatul Asr each day leading up to this evening and tonight between the 11th and into the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal reminding ourselves about the various characteristics of none other than Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we called it knowing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or getting to know Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Alhamdulillah MashaAllah I make dua, I open by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those at home, for those who are here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you abundant reward that you spend some time here and it was definitely a joyous journey for myself and my colleagues and my brothers the imams who spoke and I hope it was a joyous occasion and I believe it was a joyous occasion for yourselves because it was a nice experience getting to know some of the beautiful characteristics of the one who is beautiful himself Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I've been given a topic to finish the you know the icing on the cake as they say and my topic is what was his relationship Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala how was the relationship between the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself and all morning or all day when I've been going through what I want to say and the points that I want to make I very quickly came to the conclusion that it's very difficult for me to use any word to describe the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahu Akbar and his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his friendship and I want to just put a disclaimer before I speak that whatever I say will be metaphoric because ultimately we must remember that his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was one of worship he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but his level and where he was and who he was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was by no means normal it was special and it was beyond special and my words and my explanations are around how special it was by no means is it an equal it is he was the special banda he was this friend he was the habib of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and one of the things about friendship or one of the things when you love someone because the entire thing is around how much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him and how much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an announcement of his coming his birth his family his city his characteristics and all the way till how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes those similar and same announcements on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. When he gives the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the keys to Jannah, the opening of Shifa'a, he will be the authority on that day. And all of this, when you look at it from a theme, it is a pure relationship where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms his infinite love for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa so I'm going to break it down into some small segments. Before the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on the face of this earth, 
and when the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam leaves the face of the earth. So now imagine now you have got a friend, or you have got something that you are proud of. The first thing that we do is we make an announcement and we build an introduction into letting people know that I am about to show you something, I am about to send you something, I am about to gift you something. So just before the coming of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa taala started off with Adam alayhi salatu wasallam all the way 124,000 individual Rasuls and messengers and Nabis and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined so that he can make the announcement of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we have something that we like, when we have something that we are proud of, we spend a few moments talking about it, say, hey, look at this. This is what I've got. This is what it is. This is why it's special. But imagine the entire course of history before the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their entire existence was centered around the fact that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is coming himself. This is the introduction that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave to his beloved Nabi Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Allah himself introduced Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how did he introduce the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So we know that he was introduced by the remembrance, by the announcements of the prophets before him, alayhi salatu wasalam. But at the time of his coming, when Allah Masajid Junis talked about his blessed birth, the nur within the earth, the way he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born and he was in a position of sujood, the way he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was born, imagine being born and giving the declaration of shahada at the time of your birth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Anybody would know that this, this individual, this baby, this beauty, this gift is going to be something. And what was he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the context of that something? He was none other than he was the king of the dunya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would describe it as being two best friends. Being two best friends. And this friendship was centered around the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the perspective of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, it was about taking care of his friend. It was about taking care of his friend, the friend that he loved beyond anything and everything in the world to the point that he loved this friend so much that the entire world was made around him and for him sallallahu <coughs> alayhi wasallam. This was the relationship of friendship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Habib. The description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he is truly my friend. Yeah. And one of the things about friendship is that you know your friends and everybody here is of age whether you're young whether you're old there is an age that we all have even a young child has a friend because the thing about friendship is you feel comfortable in that person's presence so when you have a friend you know as we call it in our context he's my he's my boy he's my homie he's my best friend you know he's my dost whatever all of these lead to one thing that you feel comfortable in, the, in that person's presence. And if there's an issue, you turn to that person. But the friendship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not just the best friends that they were, but it was a friendship which was based on worship. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to establish his friend, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That he had a protocol when he communicated with him. And every time when he communicated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would communicate with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah would send his archangel to the earth. Allah would send not just his angel, the angel that was in charge of all his angels. That before I talk to my Habib, oh my Habib, I'm talking to you, the protocol, the love that I'm showing you, I will send Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam himself before I address you.
Subhanallah. And when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned and responded back to his friend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do? It was all centered around one thing, that he made sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he asked his friend for something. He had entrusted his entire existence into the care of his friend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the most significant thing that he did about the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in response that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him again and again and again and he says himself that I command not just you not just the angels to do dhikr and to do praise of this beloved Habib of mine sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but I myself make praise of this Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this was the friendship, this was the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him and he used him as a model, as a great role model, as an example we go as far as saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala countless times in the Quran He took oath upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his qasam on the existence, on the characteristics and the qualities of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he says in the Quran لعمرك, That he took qasam, he took an oath on his wujud in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wadduha, I take an oath, I take a qasm on your face, O beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He takes a, 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 an oath on his, on his beloved hair sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, Wallayli idha saja. Then he talks about his beloved speech and the way he talked to people and the way he addressed waqilihi. Then he goes on to say, al baladin amin, that he takes an oath on the city that he lived in, on his existence and the places that he would walk around and the places that he would live and the places that he grew up. And then he talks about his beautiful akhlaq. That he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَزِيمٍ Oh my beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are amongst the best of akhlaq. So what do we understand by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking these countless oaths and oaths and oaths upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with him. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his friendship, through his worship and through being who he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attained the ultimate success because he had made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala razi. He had made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. He had made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proud. He had made sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had declared him to be successful. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? In the same surah, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى That I have told everybody, I have told the entirety of my creation that you must worship me. You must worship me. The purpose of our existence is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We learn countless times in the Quran, again and again, that we are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa when he talked about the worship of his beloved Habib, how his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pleased him, he says, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى That people, O oh my Messenger, you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. myself, but I want to make sure that you are happy. His friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to check in on him. You know how we friends, we check in on our friends? We found them, are you okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, go and see if my Habib is okay. Go and see and ask him, does he want anything? To the point, to the point, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, at the time when he departed from the face of this earth, when the angel of death, Malakul Maut, came to him, who did he bring? Who did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send? That, oh Jibreel, go and make sure that when he returns back to me, ask him that does he want to come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see you, O oh Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, the skies, the arsh, everything above and above is in awe, is in josh of your coming. You know, the sadness is here. 
When something leaves, the people who say goodbye are the ones who are sad. But the people who receive are the ones who are happy. This was the same with the dunya and the heavens and the skies. That when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going to meet his Lord, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends Jibreel that before you go knock on his door, ask him, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends his salam upon you. And all of this leads to what? That ultimately Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when it comes to his relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the context of worship and making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him as a friend and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also as his friend. Mm-hmm. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we learn this in the story of Mi'raj, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from heaven to heaven to the limits of the sky, to the next limit of the sky, to the next limit of the sky, to teach him that, oh my beloved Habib, come to me, let me talk to you, let me be in your company, come and see me, come and talk to me, come and take counsel from me, Jibreel, you stay there, your limit is there, let my Habib come to me, and at every stage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him something, why, oh my Habib, when you return back to the dunya after Mi'raj, you will face X challenge, you will face this challenge, you will face that challenge. But remember, I am watching over you. Remember, I take care of you. And remember, it is you who I take care of. You have nothing to worry about. And on your Qiyamah, we will see the friendship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Habib. We will see this is unseen. All of this we talk about. The, the key to belief is that we as Muslims, we believe what we do not see. We don't see it with our physical eye. And we, we believe in Allah's existence. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us Jannatul Firdaus, inshallah. Everybody say, Ameen. Ameen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, I make dua for my brothers and my sisters, those who believed in me that didn't see me. This is what he's talking about. But there's the time to come that you will see something. You will see and this will be on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. When your Nabi, my Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will be standing with the flag of Jannah. When he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will be standing as the commander on that day. When he will be the guest of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Bring the maqam of Mahmood, let my Habib sit on it. Show him respect, show him love. Oh my messenger, before you, until you go into Jannatul Firdaus, no one can enter. The keys to Jannah will be in the hands of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because on that day he too will be the guest of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he's on this, on the love of this guest, this Habib, this friend, this, this Abd of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This perfect entity in the example of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We look to develop a friendship with him. We look to develop a friendship with none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by connecting to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by looking at how did he live his life sallallahu alayhi wa what did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do what did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam avoid what did he like what did he dislike why because everything connects you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the, many of the mashayikh give many examples of the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of my favorites amongst many, and this is what I will finish on, it is like a flower. And we see flowers in front of us today. And what do we find in the flower? That we have petals around and then the center is covered by the flower, uh, by the petals. The petals are like Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You have to unpick them. And what you find inside is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the analogy that we give. That to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must, you have to go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because get, to get to know someone, sometimes you have to go through their friend. And the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest Wali, the greatest Abd, the greatest creation, entity, you name it, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was none other than Sayyiduna Muhammadu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an opportunity, firstly to be like him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but also on that day may he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an ability to see him, 
to meet him, mm. to talk to him, mm. you know, to be in his company, mm. to spend mm. time with him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody say Amin. I will finish with a small dua and I thank everybody for coming to the last 11 days and spending your time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability, mm. first and foremost myself, to listen to what I've said. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all to take barakah <coughs> from the reminders that were given over the last 11 days. Jazakumullah khayran. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Yeah.